Hi guys, welcome to the last episode of the Theory of Strength Training series. Today we're going to be talking about individualization of training. Individualization is one of the most misunderstood aspects of training. And to illustrate what I mean, I would like to talk a little bit about the current state of the fitness industry and to show you how individualization is tied into it. Number one on our list is steroids. If you don't understand the difference between training with and without steroids, things can be very confusing. Because one Mr. Olympia does six sets for his back and another Mr. Olympia does 40. And the bottom line explanation that is given is that everyone is different. Next thing you know, you walk into the gym and everybody's doing something completely random. And you don't see anything like that anywhere else. For example, I personally train at some of the best martial arts gyms and with some of the most elite military units in the world. And I never seen such high emphasis on individualization of training. For example, when you walk into a kickboxing gym, a coach doesn't ask you what punch would you prefer or how much training you can tolerate based on your genetics. That doesn't happen because in the beginning, everybody's doing the same thing, which is learning basics. For example, I personally didn't start working with a coach one-on-one -on -one until I won a national tournament and was getting ready for world championships. That's when Phil Nurse took me to the side to show me a few things. But that was because I already knew basics and he just wanted to adjust a few things. And not because I needed a tailor-made training program based on my individual differences. The second one on our list is social media. And although there are a lot of good information about training on social media these days, and hopefully this channel is part of it, we still have to remember that at the end of the day, this is about entertainment. And in order for people to stay relevant, they have to be able to continuously amuse their audience somehow. Which is probably a little easier for a pretty girl, especially if she's not wearing too much clothes and uh, pictures and videos. But guys have to be a little more clever about this. So maybe instead of posting a video of a plain bench press, you can post a video of around the world flies. And then maybe superset it with TRX push-ups to make it look even more sophisticated. And the problem with that is that if you are continuously exposed to it over and over, you might just assume that proper training is about getting as creative as possible. Which is unfortunately the opposite from the repetitive boring training that you actually should be doing. Number three on our list are personal trainers. And I don't mean to offend anyone, but we all know that personal trainers make their money by having their clients stay with them for as long as possible. And that's why it wouldn't make sense for them to introduce someone to a training program such as starting strength for example, and then maybe teach all the main exercises for a few more weeks. Because you wouldn't need them afterwards. And that's why every time you walk into the gym to work with a personal trainer, they will have highly individualized training program designed specifically for you based on your individual differences. And that's why some of you might have noticed that when personal trainers work with their clients, it's never anything basic. It's always some kind of hybrid exercise with elastic bands, kettlebells, and balance balls. Number four on our list is ignorance. It is hard for us to appreciate things that are free, like this air for example. Without it, I will be choking in seconds. And yet, it is difficult for me to appreciate it because I'm so accustomed to having it around me all the time. The same thing happened to knowledge these days. We are so spoiled with information that has very little value to us. You guys are a little different because the fact that you are watching this video means that you are trying to learn. I imagine nobody's watching this because they find me so entertaining. But just think about your average belly total fitness gym member. How many of them have ever read a single book on resistant training? And yet none of them will ever admit they don't know what they're doing. Especially guys. I discussed this in my previous video when I said that guys consider knowing how to lift weights to be one of these macho things. Meaning that this is not something that any guy will ever admit that he doesn't know anything about. So what do you do? You fake it till you make it. And if their training program doesn't make any sense whatsoever to you, that's because they're trying to find what works best for them based on their individual differences. The last one on our list is instinctive training. 
Instinctive training is a very old bodybuilding philosophy that states that you should be adjusting your training based on your body's feedback. But what is often being overlooked is the fact that instinctive training has always been considered a very advanced training technique. And it has nothing to do with beginners and very little to do with intermediates. And Dorian Yates actually has a very good quote on this topic. And he goes, if I listen to my instincts, I would be at the pub chasing women and not under 400 pound bar squatting. Meaning that there is really nothing intuitive about lifting weights. And for you to be using how you feel about certain things at the gym as your primary guide to, through your workout might just lead you in a very opposite direction from what you actually should be doing. Now let's talk a little bit about proper applications. And the first one on our list is recovery. This is something that we talked about in great detail in the energy budget episode. And the only variable that I would like to add to that list is the size of an athlete. And here, once again, I'm going to use an analogy back from my fighting days. Pretty much no matter what martial art gym I would go to, I was always one of the biggest guys in the class. And while everybody else was still warming up, I would usually be already completely soaked in sweat. Because as you can imagine, it's very different when a 100 pound guy does 50 burpees and when somebody who's almost 300 pounds does 50 burpees. So that's why this is something that you have to consider when you program volume and frequency for athletes in different weight classes. And hand to hand with size of an athlete goes an experience. Because usually the longer you've been lifting weights, the bigger you are and the heavier weights you are lifting which will probably make your training sessions more and more challenging. And as you might remember from our progressive overload discussion, the harder your training sessions are, the, the more time you will probably need to recover from them. Number two on our list are weak points. So for example, if you are a bodybuilder and you notice that your shoulders start to overpower in your pecs a little bit, so you might decide to decrease the amount of work that you do for your shoulders and increase the amount of work that you do for your packs. Or if you're power lifter and you find that a lockout is a weak point of your bench press, you might decide to do a little extra work for your triceps to address that. And the last are injuries and disabilities. And this is not something that's traditionally being included in this discussion, but we might as well mention it here because it is not uncommon to have to make modifications to your training program while working around an injury. Now let's see how applicable any of this is during different stages of your career. And we're gonna start with beginners. Recovery should not really be a big problem for a beginner considering the loads that they are using in training. And if it is a big problem, the chances are that you're not using a training program that is appropriate for you in the first place. As far as weak points, Everything is a weak point for a beginner. All your muscles are small, all your lifts are weak. Because if it wasn't the case, why would you start lifting in the first place? As far as injuries, unless you're coming into this with pre-existing injury from a different sport, this once again should not be a big concern in the initial stages of your training. And although unfortunate accidents do happen in the gym, from what I personally have seen, most of the time, injuries in the beginner stages of your career are nothing else but a result of a careless attitude. So as you can see, none of this is a big deal in initial stages of your training. And that's why if you're a beginner, you need to find a training program that makes sense on paper based on all the criteria that we discussed in the previous episodes of this series and you stick to that program. All this will become more relevant in the intermediate stage of your career. And that's why at this time you can start playing with a little fine tuning of your training program. And also let's not forget that variation will become more important at this time. But that also has to be done intelligently and not based on whatever you feel like doing. Now all of this will become very, very relevant during the advanced stage of your career. You might remember our discussion on loading patterns. I said that the line between overreaching and overtraining will become very, very thin at this stage. Now, as far as weak points, this is probably something that has to do with genetics at this point. So, for example, your calves need a lot of extra work for them to keep growing. As far as injuries, 
it should be very clear to you at this stage that you are probably playing with fire and the chances are that if you are a truly advanced athlete you already have at least some prehab rehab work included in your training program so as you can see all these things will probably require that an advanced level with almost no exception training program will have to be highly individualized now with that being said even if you've been working out for more than 20 years if you're still squatting 315 and benching 225 unless you are a very small person the chances are you are not very advanced athlete to sum up individualization i'm just gonna say that it's not about reinventing the wheel it's about optimizing training program appropriately to the training stage that you are in so this is the last episode of the theory of strength training series and we covered a lot of the material in these 10 episodes and some of you will probably need a little more time to fully process it and of course if anything was unclear you guys know where to find me so thank you for tuning in and i'll see you guys next time